Today we're milling up some really ordinary logs that have been in our log yard for a while. They're a bit big for the log edger, so we'll throw them up on the Canadian saw and break them down. Now the logs you're about to see are what I'd call third grade salvage logs, meaning that they are dodgy logs that we bought into the mill on the off chance that we might get something out of them. Now some would have been near dead or dead. Some would have fell over and may have been laying on the ground for 10 years or more. Some just well and truly have reached their use by date. Now, the use by date would vary from area to area, but in short, in our area, once a tree gets to about 60 to 70 years old, it's usually starting to go backwards. There's a long-term flow on effect by tidying up the bush. If we don't harvest these older, dying trees, like the one you see on the carriage now, we cannot promote the growth of new, younger and better trees to take their place. While these old worn out trees are taking up space in the bush, nothing else will ever grow in that spot. The reason being is that there's only a finite amount of light, space and moisture available to support the growth of those trees. This log is an old bloodwood log. It looks like it's been dead for some time. Now bloodwood is one of those hardwood species that can go either way when you mill them up. They're called bloodwood because they're likely to have a lot of dark red blood vein inside them. So let's take a look at this one and see how we go. It doesn't look real flash on the outside. And as expected, it's a bit ordinary inside. There's plenty of blood vein evident in this one. But in saying that, it might slab up and make a really nice highly featured bar top if it was dried and sanded. And we've got a few logs out there like this one that we can slab up into 75mm thick slabs. We also have some big slabs outside like this being dried at present. This log is an old grey gum. It's a good durability class one locally grown hardwood. Now we identify the trees on our property that are going backwards and are about to fall over. And we harvest them and we try and make use of them before they fall down and get burned in the next fire. We would prefer to harvest the old and damaged ones and leave as many of the good ones that we can. It then leaves more moisture, space and light for those better, younger trees to keep growing. So the exercise you're looking at here now, GT Hardwood, is all about training ourselves to make the best use of this sort of resource. The reality is this, for every good tree or log available to us, there are at least 20 or 30 more very ordinary ones that are about to fall over. If they fell over in your own backyard, you'd tidy them up and do something with them. Even mulching them up would still be better than allowing them to burn. We're no different. We just go one step further and we take them to the sawmill. So the pressure is on for people like us to come up with ways of utilising this massive volume of resource that we have in our bush. And we all know now the consequences for not keeping your bush tidy. Early in 2020, an estimated 18.6 million hectares, which is equal to 186,000 square kilometres, burnt destroying over 5,900 buildings, including 2,779 homes. I suppose the next thing you're going to ask is, why are there so many dead and dying trees in the bush? Well, that's a good question. Most of them are old, a lot of them get damaged by fire, we get big groups of trees dead from lightning strikes. We also see vast areas where the trees have died from what we call dieback. Now whether it's from disease or the dry weather, I'm not sure. But these trees make up well over half the trees that we harvest. It's vital that we cull them now and allow some space for the new, more resilient trees to take their place. You can see that this log has a big hole in it. It's used by date well and truly passed about 25 years ago. Now this is a good example of a tree that should have been harvested a long time ago. And the grey gum is always a good species of hardwood to have in stock because it's so durable. When this stuff dries, it's like steel. 
and it's nearly as heavy as steel also. In fact, it's probably better than steel because it doesn't rust. Anyway, we'll give this one a go and we'll see what we can get out of it. One thing about these old logs, the timber produced from them will be stable. Man, oh man, wouldn't that slab make a ripper bar top? And that Canadian carriage, isn't it a great bit of gear? It just mows through those big logs with no problem at all. Mind you, it helps when you have the saws working well, and as you can see, they're on fire today. This looks like another grey gum log. You can see there's some really good colouring coming through in it. You can now see that it didn't open up all that good with a bit of fault in the middle of the log. Anyway, we should get some good boards off either end of it. These smaller chunks being taken up by the log loader and they are heading up to the twin saw log edger to be broken down further. We'll throw another log up before knock off time and see how we go. It looks like a grey gum also. Now this one certainly looks a bit ordinary on the outside. Now fire gets into these old trees. It gets up into the centre of them and they usually tend to burn to the ground. Younger trees are usually solid and the fire can't get into them. As you can see when the loader picked this one up, we can see the underside of it, that there's not a lot of good wood left in there. So the moral of the story is this, reduce the fuel loads in the bush, harvest what dead and dying trees that you can, recycle that resource, make space for the younger, more resilient trees to flourish, maintain your hardwood forest in pristine condition, as opposed to being burnt bare and set back 100 years, along with most of the animals being burnt alive.